So Julie, good morning. Good morning. I want to thank you first of all for volunteering, sort of volunteering, I, to, to do this uh, practice or sample coaching session. Um, we're doing this as part of a, a series of, of lunch seminars for macro. Mm -hmm. And um, as we talked about beforehand, we didn't rehearse this or practice this. This is going to be some what we call laser coaching. Um, we'll do a 10, 12 minute session. Normally a coaching session would be 45 minutes and there might be several coaching sessions to help somebody dealing with an issue or, or a conflict or a dispute. But just to give people a, a kind of a flavor for what coaching is like, what it is and what it isn't. Um, and we talked a little bit about that. I'm going to be basically, after you explain what the issue is you'd like to work on, asking you a series of questions to try to help you think about the issue perhaps in a, in a new kind of way, give mm -hmm. some transformative thinking about it, and maybe in the last couple of minutes even come up with a homework assignment or something to think about after the session's over. Okay? You okay with that? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Sure. So tell me a bit about what the, the issue is that you'd like to work on today. Yeah, and I, I teach in a program where we do a day of sessions with different groups of students, so they come in and out of the classroom. Um, and then we have instructors who have two hour blocks throughout the day. Okay. I teach after uh, another instructor who is just making me really crazy. And I need to figure out how to deal with him because this is gonna go on for a period of time. Sure. Um, and I'm concerned about this because I, I don't wanna end up being unprofessional and start yelling at the guy, but we're really close to that. Mm -hmm. um, what he does, our, our classroom is, um, we have a lot of technology in there because we're recording, we're using audio visual aids, we have, it's like a little TV studio, mm -hmm. kind of. And I have two issues. One, this guy just cannot seem to figure out how to use the equipment. So he's been shown several times, I've shown him, other people have shown him. Uh, he's been doing this for long enough now that he ought to have it figured out. But every single time I go in there after him, things are all screwed up. He's pushed all the wrong buttons, he's screwed up the settings, and it's not immediately apparent what the differences are what's messed up. Mm -hmm. So it's only when I get into my teaching that I find out something's not working right or you know the students can't use something. So we run into all these crazy problems. Okay. Like it won't record the audio because he turned off the, the huh. microphone or something right. like that. All right. So that's a problem. Yeah. Um, but then it really came to a head the other day. He was having some problem with it and he couldn't get the uh, we have a TV, and so in between classes, we'll just put on the news or something for students to, to look at. Mm -hmm. He couldn't figure out how to turn that off, mm -hmm. so he ripped the cables out of the speakers. Mm. Interesting way to re resolve which, an issue. Which resulted for his class, but then he, he didn't fix it. He didn't tell me about it. He just left at the end of the class. Okay. I needed them, yeah. and it took me forever. Finally, some students said, you know, I see some wires hanging out over there, and then... <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He had just ripped it. I just, I don't know how to deal with this guy. Okay, that's, that's a great issue to, to deal with. Um, appreciate you bringing that to us. So um, tell me first of all, have you had any discussions with him about this? Does he know how you feel about this? No. Well, I, you know, I, I think my offers of help uh, before this speaker incident, um, he may have gotten the sense that I was getting a little frustrated, like, you know. Yeah. I, I'm sure that tone came into my voice. You know, sure. Well, I've showed you. Be sensitive to it's, tone of voice. If he is, but yeah. maybe he's not. What I was curious about is you used a phrase that he's making you crazy. It's an interesting phrase. And I'm not a, not a therapist, so we're not going to get into the, what that you know, means in a deep-seated kind of way. But tell me a little bit more about what does is, what is making you crazy mean to you? It, it means that I'm, I'm really, really frustrated with this because... Partly, it makes me, it, it sort of makes our whole program look unprofessional mm -hmm. when, mm. It, you know, I have to fix all these problems every time a class comes into the, to the studio to do my class. Yeah. It it's, takes away from the time that I have with my students because I spend the first part of my class time fixing all of this mess that he's left me. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it just, I don't understand how somebody could be so oblivious and so... I don't know, disrespectful. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it just upsets me. And so I've, it sounds to me like it really conflicts with some strong values that you hold about being respectful to other people, being conscious and aware of what our actions do to the environment we're in, 
and that he's not considering what it does, to, how the impact it has on your teaching ability with your class. So mm -hmm. those are at least three things. Maybe there, mm -hmm. there are more. Those are the three that, that I heard. But professionalism sounds like a really important value for you. It is, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I work hard to, to be professional, to deliver the best product that I can, mm -hmm. to take care of my students, to interact well with the other people I work with. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like this guy is, well, first he's making me look unprofessional, mm. which upsets me a lot. And I don't think he's being very professional. Okay. Let, can we, in the short time we have here, deal with making you look unprofessional? Mm -hmm. Okay. Whether or not he's professional, because, you know, we all know we can control what we do and what we think, but really have little control over what other people do and think. So mm -hmm. let's focus on you. Tell me what you think um, your students think about all this. I think they think, you know, they, they paid a lot of money to come to this program and they waited a long time to get into it. Mm -hmm. And so here they come and they expect us to really have our stuff together. Mm -hmm. And we look like the Keystone Cops. I, you know, we just look, I, I think it, it diminishes their, um, their pride in being accepted into the program and their, you know, how they feel about the quality okay. of what they're getting. Mm -hmm. Have they said anything to you about these well, technology you, you kind of or? hear them mumbling back and forth, and you know, and some of them laugh about it, and some of them don't. And I try to minimize my reaction in front of them. Yeah. But boy, the speaker incident made it really hard. Okay. So what coaching is about helping people align their values with their actions. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, we can have all sorts of thoughts in our heads and want to do all sorts of things to other people. But around conflict coaching, it's really what would you feel, you, Julie, feel most comfortable doing in a situation like that to try to get it resolved somehow? What, what lines up with the values that you have, not just around professionalism, but about dealing with conflicts? Mm -hmm. What's your conflict management style around dealing with things like this? Yeah, I, I think a lot of times I avoid conflicts. I mean, you know, I just want to be the nice person and go along to get along and that kind of thing. But at this point, it feels like we probably need to have some kind of a conversation and kind of put it out on the table and so I can tell him what's bothering me and maybe we can work out some other way to deal with it. And I'd, I'd love to do that. And I'm afraid that when I go into a conversation like that, sometimes I get emotional and it's really hard for me to maintain my own sort of sense of together okay um, and so so, so what would, would it look like if you had this conversation with him i don't even know his name we don't need his name if you're having this conversation with him and you got emotional what would that look like to you what would it look like yeah. um first it usually starts because I, I get tense and then it's hard to breathe and it's hard to talk um and at my worst i end up crying which then you know it makes me feel even less professional. I, you know, it's just a spiral. I, you know, uh, I get flushed and I'm okay. upset, and I don't like that at all. Well, it's good that you know yourself that way, right? That, that this, and it sounds like this kind of conversation might could trigger that. Yeah. Okay. So, what might you do? Think about doing to um, to have a conversation with him? And you know, you don't always have to do things like this alone. What what help might you get in having a conversation like this? I don't know. Um, and you said you don't have to do this alone. What, what do you mean? Like, who? What do mediators do? <laughs> mediator, yeah, a mediator could help. Yeah. So is there anybody like in, in the administration at the college or university who you might be able to talk about with this, confide in, or somebody you have some trust in? who might understand your situation and somehow um, facilitate a discussion so that you don't have to get so emotional about it? I have to think about that. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. I mean, I don't necessarily want to get him in trouble. I don't, I don't want to start there. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid if I went to the person who kind of runs the program, who, that we both report to, that that might be how he would perceive it and probably how, how the administrator would perceive it too. Okay. Um, you know, I kind of don't want to be the, the tattletale. You know, sure. I, that, so who else might so. help you with this? Um, we have some other colleagues who teach in the program with us who might, might be able to help with that. Mm -hmm. um, One or two people come to mind who um, you trust enough to understand 
your situation mm -hmm. and that he might trust as well, you know, somebody who, who could come to it with um, kind of an equal footing with both of you? Well, you know, we, um, we both were trained by a senior instructor um, who's a friend of mine. I feel like I could talk to him about it. Uh -huh. and, and I imagine that the other guy would respect, you know, his, uh, his voice, his opinion. Um, and, and would you feel like a tattletale if you went to this instructor about it and asked for some help? Maybe a little bit less because we're, I mean, he's senior, but we're all kind of on the same level. Okay. Um, so it would seem like we might be able to have a conversation, you know, the three of us, uh, where it wouldn't feel quite like that. So um, I'm going to give you a homework assignment. Okay. okay. And we can talk about this again next time. And, and with coaching, what's, what's kind of unique about homework assignments is, you, if you agree to it, it's your commitment to yourself, really, more than it is to me. Mm -hmm. And we talk about it. If you do it, great. If you don't do it, we'll talk about the reasons for your not doing it. Maybe something else came up in the meantime or something after our session. So my homework assignment for you is going to be to talk to this senior instructor, whoever mm -hmm. he is that you mm -hmm. trust, and explain the situation to him and um, have a conversation with him to see whether he would be willing to serve in that kind of facilitator role with you mm. and, and the other instructor. Okay. Are you willing yeah. to do that? Make a commitment to I yourself do to do that? I think I can do that. We're going to see each other um, before the next training, uh -huh. so that should give me a good opportunity to, to talk it over with him. So when, would you, when will you see him and talk to him about this? Probably going to be on um, Saturday. This Saturday. This Saturday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you do me a favor? Would you, after you talk to him on Saturday, send me an email? Just mm -hmm. a short email to let me know. It doesn't have to be on Saturday. I mean, next week sometime. Let me know how the conversation went. Sure. Yeah. Great. So that's part of coaching, too, is to sort of have a um, accountability piece mm -hmm. to it that mm -hmm. you and I will maintain this coaching relationship till you're satisfied that you've gotten some results that you want. And if this doesn't work, we'll talk again. We'll have another session and see what got in the way because you seem pretty comfortable with that now. I mean, may, he may say, no, I don't want to facilitate, and then we're, we're back to thinking perhaps right. some other people or some other ways of doing. Is that right. okay? Yeah, that's good. That's, okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Great.